The sixth lesson that I learned, and this was a hard lesson for me, y'all, is don't overbuy inventory. Babes, I'm Chanel the Brand Hustler and this is a channel for all my hustle babes who are interested in gaining insight on the entrepreneur journey while learning essential marketing and business tips for their brand. If that sounds like you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and join the Hustle Babe community. So today's video is actually one that you guys kind of requested, right? So it's kind of inspired by what, what you guys wanted. Um, so a few months ago, I posted a story time and I told the story of how I became a full-time entrepreneur. I shared my struggles um, in corporate America, but most importantly, I shared that The Brand Hustler is not my first business and I had actually owned some businesses in the past with one of the most important businesses being my shoe boutique because without that shoe boutique the brand hustler wouldn't have existed okay so um when i mentioned that i had that shoe boutique a lot of you guys uh had some interest in learning about my experiences as a shoe boutique owner and just some of the practices and things like that i used within my shoe boutique okay so i decided that i wanted to create this video as a way to start answering that question that you guys asked me, okay? So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some lessons that I learned as a shoe boutique owner. And just because it says shoe boutique doesn't mean that it's not applicable to your business, okay? So these uh, lessons that I learned still apply to you if you're a clothing boutique owner, if you're an accessories boutique owner. Heck, if you own a hair collection, these lessons still can help you, okay? Because the lessons that I'm going to talk to uh, talk to you about today are like about support, they're about Instagram, they're about products, um, all of that stuff I am talking about today, okay? Because I made sure that these lessons encompassed all of the different areas I feel like a lot of new entrepreneurs struggle with, or maybe not even new entrepreneurs, current entrepreneurs struggle with themselves, okay? So I wanna share some of these lessons with you guys to hopefully help take some of that stress or some of that frustration off of you and also to give you a little bit of clarity on what it was actually like and what you're actually looking forward to on this journey of entrepreneurship, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the video so the first lesson is probably going to hurt okay and that lesson is that followers don't mean much okay and the sooner you learn this the better okay so if i could curse i would but literally y'all instagram followers don't mean a thing it is better to have a smaller set of followers that are engaged and actually want what you're selling or are interested in your brand versus having a bunch of dead weight followers on your page okay because the way that the instagram algorithm works even though they keep changing it the way that it works they still are looking to see which pages get the most engagement so that way they can expand their reach, okay? And your reach will never be able to be uh, expanded because you're focusing on getting deadweight followers. You're focused on hitting up all 50 of your cousins to have them follow your page when they have absolutely no interest in your brand or buying your product. You're interested in that because you want these vanity metrics to make your brand appear more legit when in reality if you focused on mapping out your specific audience right so identifying your target audience researching your target audience and creating content and whether that's paid or organic content that actually attracted your audience right if you focused more on that you would actually see better results than if you just focused on oh i just need everybody in this room to follow me right now so, uh, you know to support my business da, da, da. no Focus on the people who actually need or want your product, okay? So that's number one, is that followers don't mean much. That was my first lesson. The second lesson is that Instagram engagement and reach means a lot, okay? It means everything, okay? So since we're on the topic of Instagram, right, I had to make sure I, I hit this point too because 
a lot of times as business owners, we just get caught up in, okay, I need to post a whole bunch of times. I need, you know, just a whole bunch of followers. And we don't actually look at the quality of the content that we're putting out. And so when you focus on the quality of your content, it's easier for you to then generate more engagement and it's easier for you to then reach more people which is the point of you making a business instagram in the first place is that you want to be able to reach your audience and grow your audience so then you can increase the traffic to your website and then increase the amount of sales that you're getting okay or generate sales in general and so it is important to pay attention to engagement and reach so instead of looking at how many followers you have it's time for you to start looking into the insights on each of your posts, seeing how many saves you're getting, seeing how many shares you're getting, seeing how how many people you're reaching on Instagram. Is it a uh, reach via the explore page? Is it reach via hashtags, the home page? Like where is this reach coming from? Paying attention to those insights are 10 times better than just going about your day just randomly posting or just focusing on followers itself okay because engagement and reach is everything if more people are engaging with your post right it shows you that they have interest in your brand or interest in your product and then they will more than likely want to go ahead and buy from you or join your email list or take that next step in whatever that customer journey is that you've mapped out for them and so I speak a lot about target audience and you're going to hear me speak about a lot of different things that may kind of like are like, I don't get what you're saying. Like, OK, how do I do this target audience thing? How do I do that? And I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But for right now, just hone in on the lessons that I'm, I'm teaching you. OK, the lessons that I learned as a shoe boutique owner. So number three, while we're on the topic of Instagram again, is Instagram is not the only way to market your business and build a brand. Once again, let me get a little closer. Instagram is not the only way to market your business or build a brand, okay? And I feel like this has to be said because in today's day and age, it's like everybody, they're like, I'm starting a business. Okay, I need an Instagram page. Sometimes they don't even think that they need a website before they think that they need an Instagram page. And while Instagram is a leading shopping platform, right? I still believe it is important to have your own website. I still believe it is important to have other uh, marketing channels that you are placing your business on. Because let's say Instagram goes down tomorrow. What will be your backup? where would your audience go you know what i'm saying are you gonna have to start from scratch like i would hate to do that okay so whether that means you need to focus on also building an email list in addition to instagram or whether that means you need to focus on having a TikTok strategy in addition to instagram having a facebook strategy in addition to instagram twitter whatever whatever that means you need to utilize another marketing channel okay and in addition to these social media platforms there's other ways to market your business there's tv advertising that a lot of people don't look into but in reality some of these commercial slots don't cost that much in this day and age there are companies out there that are making it more affordable for you to be able to be placed on Hulu or Netflix or you know one of those apps that people are watching all the time and have a commercial slot on there okay so it is important to kind of like venture out and look at other marketing channels when I had a shoe boutique I did not just use Instagram I actually focused on building my email list and that was actually like my top goal was to build my email list I also made sure that I did pop-up shops a lot so I wanted to do in addition to pop-up shops I also did like networking events and so I wanted to utilize event marketing as another channel for my business as well because I knew that I didn't want to rely just on Instagram. In addition to Instagram, the event marketing and my email marketing, I also started to build a paid strategy, right? Where I actually ran YouTube ads, okay? And a lot of business owners don't think about running YouTube ads, but I actually ran YouTube ads for some brand awareness, which turned out to work pretty well for me. Number four, since I just spoke about the fact that I uh, prioritize my email list as a shoe boutique owner, I want to get into this lesson. Your email list matters, okay? So I can't remember how many times Instagram went down when I was a boutique owner or if that was when I started the Brand Hustler, but sometime like last year or the year before, 
Instagram went down like two or three times, okay? And I remember everybody was panicking. People flocked to Twitter. Oh my God, is y'all Instagram working? Da 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 da. And I was just like, you wouldn't be panicking, sis, if you actually had at least an email list that you can reach out to, right? And so the people who had some some people on their email list, they were able to send out emails like, y'all, Instagram is down, but I'm still here. You can still buy my products. You can still do this, da 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 I'm still here for you if you need anything. Like, they were able to send out those emails. I was able to send out those emails because I had a healthy email list. Your email list matters. So please do not think that email is a thing of the past because in reality, emails can save you. All right. And same thing goes for like text marketing. I kind of combine email and text marketing sometimes in my brain because they're very similar. So if you feel like or if you test it out, and you see that your audience doesn't necessarily grasp to your emails as much. I would say work on your content, work on your call to actions, work on your subject lines and things like that. But then you can also add in text marketing to your strategy, too. Now, number five. So the fifth lesson that I learned is that. The price of your product can make or break your business, okay? So what I mean by this is you can be overpricing or underpricing your product and that can actually hinder the amount of sales that you get because when it comes to pricing your product, there are several things that you want to consider. You want to consider the cost that you've uh, occurred as a business owner. You wanna consider who your competition is, right? When you do your competitor's analysis, you also wanna consider who your customers are. So who's within your audience? Who is your target audience? Who are you trying to attract? And you also wanna consider your company. So, okay, boom, what does your company stand for? What is your company? Uh, what does your company's brand stand for? You know, what makes up that brand? You wanna consider those, and I call those the four C's of pricing and so if you want like to learn more about how to price your products and things like that i'm going to put a video on the screen where i talk about pricing your products um so that you can check it out but i learned that your pricing can make or break you so the way that i actually developed that pricing formula was through trial and error when i had a shoe boutique and so <laughs> that's how I know that pricing can make or break you because once I got to that sweet spot for my audience of pricing, that is when I saw more results, okay? The sixth lesson that I learned, and this was a hard lesson for me, y'all, is don't overbuy inventory, okay? Don't do it, all right? So I am one that's tell, I'm, I'm a person who's like, will tell you go for your goals, shoot big, go big or go home. But there's a smart way to do that when it comes to inventory, okay? And Overbuying your inventory isn't necessarily like a smart thing because then you end up having a bunch of stuff that people may not want, especially when you're a new business owner. So I tell people to base the amount of inventory you buy based off of like your goals, your budget and some other things, and then utilize that first, uh, your first set of collections that you launch, utilize the data from that, right? To then buy more inventory because you may launch with, let's say, 10 products and out of the 10 products, maybe your audience helped you sell out of five and the other five, they're moving really slow. That can tell you that your audience more so loves these uh, these types of products, those five that sold really fast, they love those more than the others. Or even if it doesn't even, if it, even if you don't end up selling out of something, you can pay attention to your website analytics, right? And you can see what products are being viewed the most, added to cart the most, and things like that. That will also tell you what your audience, once again, is interested in. And so you can make sure that when it comes to buying your next set of inventory, you buy more of those things. If you start off with just overbuying inventory, or even if you decide to test out new types of products and things like that, and you just continue to like come in with hundreds or whatever amount of products, you will continuously have just leftover products that you have to end up putting on sale because no one bought the products in the first place, okay? So it is important to have like a little test trial run, I like to call it, where you base the amount of inventory off of your goals, your budgets and things like that. And then you use the money that you make to reinvest and buy the products that people are actually paying attention to or that your audience actually wants, okay? Now, the seventh lesson that I learned are that picture angles, and picture variety are super important, okay? So when it comes to putting your pictures up on your website, or even when it comes to putting your pictures up on like social media or something like that, um, having a variety of pictures of one product helps because you have to think about it like this, right? When you go to the mall, 
you're able to try on things in like the dressing room, right? When it comes to clothing or shoes, right? You are also able, if it's not clothing or shoes and it's like skincare or something like that, you're able to hold it in your hand. Sometimes you can even open the jar, see how thick the consistency is. Depending on the store you're at, they'll have like a tester of whatever product um, that you can like test and swatch on your hand or whatever, right? And so you're able to do all these things, smell, feel, uh, see, while you are actually at the store. Online, you can't do that, right? So it is important to be able to give people as much as possible so that they can kind of start to fall in love with your product without the need of, of actually having it in hand, right? So that means if you have clothing, right? Maybe you wanna show that clothing different angles, side, back, front, and also have different sized models so that people can see how it fits certain body types um, and fits certain body sizes, right? Same thing goes for like, if you have like shoes, right? You can model the shoes, record videos, take the pictures in different angles, take pictures with the shoe off and not on the foot so that people can see just the different levels of that shoe. If you have like beauty products or makeup products and things like that, have, you know, have different videos, different pictures where you're showing the consistency of your body butter or uh, rubbing in that glitter cream that you created so people could see how it shimmers. There's different things that you can do to make sure that people still get that try on experience, even though they're not in person. And y'all, the last chunk that I want to talk about it's all kind of like mental stuff, but these are lessons that I've learned as an entrepreneur nonetheless, okay? And so the eighth lesson that I wanna share with you guys is that support can be given in different ways, all right? And so before I dive into this, I know that like a lot of people are like, oh, my family doesn't support me, my friends don't support me, yada, yada. And I'm always one to say that that doesn't matter like you don't really need them to support you by buying your products because there are people out there your audience is waiting on you your audience is the one who has that need or that problem that your product can solve for them and so those are the people that you need to be focused on attracting and they will support you tenfold right so i always say that but here's the thing right it is very important to, to know that support doesn't always mean buying from you, okay? So this is what I mean when I say support come in different ways because when you start a business for some reason, it's like support immediately means that that person needs to buy from you. That person does not need to buy from you. If they don't have the need or they don't have the problem that your particular product solves, they don't need to buy from you. And believe it or not, the type of clothing that you sell still needs to solve a problem or provide a need. So although you may say, everybody needs clothes, so everybody can buy from me that's within my family or my friend group, that does not, that's actually not true at all, right? Like that doesn't make any sense because if that was the case, everybody would dress the exact same way. Everybody would use the exact same products. And we don't because we have different interests, different needs, and different problems. So with that being said, support comes in different ways, okay? So support can be maybe your family member or friend showing up to an event you're having or offering to help you package orders or offering to go to a pop-up shop with you and helping uh, pitch your product to people that walk by or whatever that may be, right? So like, for example, like my fiance sells stuff for men, right? He has sold like a, a bonnet as a special Valentine's Day thing, but he sells stuff for men. I am not a man. I cannot wear the things that he sells, but a way that I can support him is by sharing his post, by going to events with him and selling, uh, selling his products to other people, by mentioning... I mentioned my fiance a lot in a lot of my videos. I use his business as an example sometimes, right? I mention him to the members of the e-hustle clubs, for example. I mentioned his business, like, so this is me supporting him in a different way that doesn't actually mean sales. Now, yes, I have purchased from him and I have purchased from him for my dad, for example, but still, before I even did that, I was supporting him through doing other things, right? And so sometimes your family and your friends can support you in these ways and you can be so, uh, like, you can ignore that because you're so focused on them buying from you that then you put yourself into this box and you make yourself sad because you feel like people don't support you when in reality, 
You may have friends and family members that are sharing your business or that are offering to help or doing whatever for you, but you aren't focused on that, right? And so it's important to, to know that support comes in different ways, all right? Now, the ninth lesson that I learned, y'all, is that it actually helps to surround yourself with like-minded people. So your net worth is your network, okay? That is major. I want you to remember that. Your net worth is your net worth, okay? Everyone that you surround, everyone that pours into you, right? They help make you who you are. And I know you like to say, I'm, you know, I'm self-made, da, 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 got it out the mud, blah, blah, blah. But come on. In reality, if you have certain people around you who are constantly talking about business, constantly motivating you, constantly dropping different gems, or you guys are figuring things out together, that helps you on your, uh, on your entrepreneurship journey. That helps you be more successful. That helps you think about things in a way that you wouldn't have thought about if you didn't have those people around you. So it is very important to surround yourself with like-minded people because if you don't and you're surrounding yourself with people who are negative or people who don't believe in what you got going on or who don't see life with the same lens that you do, it can be very draining and it can do the opposite for you, okay? It can hinder your success as an entrepreneur. So that's important to remember that you need to surround yourself with like-minded people. So when I was um, a shoe boutique owner, I actually joined a bunch of different Facebook groups. I paid to be in this mentorship program. And whenever I would go out to events, I would get like the ladies numbers. We would follow each other on our personal pages and things like that, just to make sure that, you know, we kept a certain energy around us, okay? So if you're not doing that, definitely start to do that um and start to x out some of the people who bring negative energy i'm all for cutting people off just cut them off throw them in the trash keep it moving okay and that brings me to the final lesson that i learned as a shoe boutique owner okay and that is that oh and i love this one right i love it love it love it because i'm always reading people about investing in yourself so the tip lesson that i learned is that investing in yourself pays you back big time okay like i know that when it comes to spending money we have the tendency of being cheap cutting corners <laughs> and all of this but honestly like investing in yourself is like the most rewarding thing ever you may not see the reward right away but down the line it honestly pays off big time especially if you're making the right investments okay <laughs> not just throwing stuff away but honestly it helps out big time okay so a lot of the classes and coaching sessions and things like that and even going to uf right those investments have started to pay off for me okay and i continue to make investments in my business although i don't own the shoe boutique anymore i make investments a lot a lot a lot of investments with this business and that is honestly like one of the reasons why I tend to see things work out in my favor, okay? So if you are known to be the cheapskate, please don't be cheap when it comes to investing yourself, okay? Please do not be cheap in that, in that arena, all right? So those are my 10 lessons that I learned as a shoe boutique owner. And with those 10 lessons that I learned, I actually think that it's important for you to like kind of take what I said, think about what you're doing currently as a business owner. If you don't own a business yet, think about how you can make sure that you put these lessons into action because I want you to learn from, you know, my mistakes and things like that. Use these lessons wisely. And with that being said, the eHustle Club was actually created because I wanted to give kind of like a blueprint to launching a business and to, you know, having a successful brand and things like that. Um, I made sure that I have a networking element there so you are able to interact with a group of like-minded individuals. You're able to gain support from like-minded individuals, support from experts as well. I also made sure that I included, you know, classes and things like that. We have live classes every single month. We have guest speakers every month. Um, and so those things are included so that you can learn certain things like target audience. You can learn certain things about how to price your product. You can learn things about how to build your brand how to uh market on other channels outside of instagram and even if you decide that you're still marketing on instagram how to use instagram to to your to your best ability okay and so we cover a lot of different topics topics within the e-hustle club and so if you are interested 
and joining definitely click the link in my description box and join before enrollment closes um i hope to see you in the e-hustle club trust me it helps a lot i literally built this club because there were lessons that i learned when i was a shoe boutique owner that i want you guys to not you know run into those mistakes or not have to go the hard route to learn those lessons now that you are in business all right so definitely open up the description box and click that link and join the e-hustle club if you are interested and so y'all that was a lot that was a mouthful this video was not supposed to be that long but i ended up talking that much anyway oh my god but <laughs> if you guys are subscribed to this channel definitely hit the subscription button below turn on your notification bell so that you can be updated when i post another video follow me on instagram at the brand hustler you can also follow my agency's instagram at the hustle babe agency for all of your design needs share this video with someone you know it can help because we need to share the wealth and not be stingy and other than that y'all i'm gonna see y'all in the next video peace bye husband babes